Paycor provides payroll and HR software to small and medium businesses. We have over 40,000 clients in a variety of industries. And from recruiting and onboarding to benefits and payroll, our clients want to make an impact in their organization, and we help them do that. We're a fast growing company, and we have plans to grow even faster. And to accomplish that, it's critical that we are always focused on improving sales productivity. And GeoPoint helps us do just that. GeoPoint is an amazing tool that's helped us to be more productive in the field. It's helped us to increase the number of prospects that we're getting in front of. And it's just amazing technology that helps us be more prepared in the field. My team absolutely loves using GeoPoint. It saved them a tremendous amount of time. And so we've seen almost two and a half more drops per week when we're using GeoPoint. I use GeoPoint on my mobile app on an almost daily basis. It actually is very strategic in the ability to optimize a specific route and get through that route in the most efficient way possible. It allows me to visualize my geographic territory, see where the concentration of my prospect accounts are, and know where I'm gonna spend the majority of my time so that I'm actually able to hit a much higher level of accounts that I would not otherwise be able to hit. Because of its integration with Salesforce, I'm able to click directly into the opportunity that I'm working on and add notes, add the visit, and log the drop that I may have done to that location. GeoPoint is an integral part of our sales process and the utilization of it across our sales team is really impactful in us being such a successful organization. As a territory analyst, I help create and equalize everybody's territories within their separate regions. It's really important to have GeoPoint so that we can manage the data so that our sales leaders can focus on managing their people. GeoPoint has been a big win for our sales organization. When we were evaluating a mapping solution, we looked at a couple of different options, and ultimately, we selected GeoPoint. These days, users are looking for intuitive, easy-to-use technology, and GeoPoint is just that. If you have sellers who are out in the field, GeoPoint is a no-brainer. It really helps them be more productive, maximize their time, and make sure that they're optimizing their client visits while they're out in the field. Hello, and welcome to this virtual dreaming admin track session. Give your users a helping hand with in-app guidance. These are our wonderful sponsors, and we say thank you to them. None of these events would be possible without them. And these are the charity partners. Um, and so they are sponsors who are donating to the COVID-19 Resilience Fund. Um, by Mercy Corps, and I believe the aim is to raise $50,000, so that is amazing. My name is Louise Lockie, and here is a little slide about me. It lists all the things that I am proud of. Uh, so starting at the top, I uh, have been awarded the Salesforce MVP title for the last four years, four years in a row. I'm very proud to hold that. And this year I'm a lightning champion as well. In London, England, where I'm from and where I'm speaking to you from today, uh, I am on the team that brings the community London's Calling, which is a dreaming event um, in London, which we just had and just had to go virtual in a matter of days. So um, the grey hairs are still there from that. Uh, I also lead the London Women Tech Community Group. Um, and yes, I do have a golden sparkly hoodie that you can see there with me with Parker Harris. Um, I have 12 certifications and I'm also a certified Salesforce instructor. Um, and you'll see there that I've spoken at quite a number of uh, different Salesforce events over the years. Obviously, Dreamforce being the biggest, but um, many other dreaming events as well. And that's, that's just a few of them. So enough about me and more about in-app guidance. Um, so why in-app guidance? Why did I want to talk about in-app guidance to today? Um, well, as I mentioned, I've spoken at a number of different events um, on different topics. But some of those topics, such as training, user adoption, um, user support, 
the user guides, the documentation, the information you leave them with, how you how you leave them after you've gone live is, is very key. Um, and this is is an evolution of that. This is Salesforce upping the, the the game and giving us new tools that I think are really crucial for for all admins out there to give their users the best user experience and to really help them. Um, and user guides that we've used in the past are are great and are not going away. But, but you know, this is a different tactic, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. I've actually. I've used this phrase in 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 other sessions before, actually, um, about change management and saying you can bring a horse to water, but you cannot make it drink. Um, and you know, I, I see this is relevant here as well. That we have our, our users and we can provide them with all the tools in the world, but we can't necessarily make them use them. Uh, so in-app guidance, I think, is is getting us, helping us get them to to drink the water and to, you know. Get it a bit closer, from you know, not quite throw it in their face, but you know, have it have it out there. Um, and how can we we do that better and um, and really um, help our users with the tools available to us? So, let's picture the scene. This wonderful, awesome admin um, has just finished. De developing the the latest app on her, on her Salesforce instance, um, it is a thing to behold. It sparkles, it shines, it is intuitive, it's it's um, comprehensive, it's user friendly. You know, she's she's worked really hard on it. She's really proud of it, um, and you know, you can see here she's happy. Great, but barely does she have time to enjoy this moment of accomplishment before the phone starts ringing and the inbox starts filling up and the meeting requests start popping, the Slack notification bounces up and down on the screen. Um, all because the users, they need help. They need a helping hand. They can't quite remember what she told them in last week's training session. So yes, this is reality slightly more often than the first picture all the notifications and the problem is you know even if we weren't in lockdown you know she can't be everywhere at once you know all right at the moment we're all working from home but you know even when she when she isn't she can't be at all the desks at one time can't be answering all those calls in all those offices at once so what does she do in app guidance guidance to the rescue so what is it well, it is a tool that is fairly new. Um, it came out um, as a beta product in summer 19, I believe, uh, and then was very quickly, the next release, winter 20, it became GA, generally available. And it's a tool that Salesforce administrators can use and configure with clicks, not code, to place pieces of guidance and I'm going to elaborate on what I mean by guidance and use some examples later on. Um, in in their org, in app, <laughs> uh, to to really help their users at the points they think they need them. So instead of you know, giving them big user guides, um, they can instead prompt them through their Salesforce journeys. Um, so as I say, admins can do this. So if you've got the system administrator profile easy, good, nothing to worry about. You have the ability to create these prompts. Um, but if you'd like to um, delegate that to a member of the team that doesn't have the system administrator profile to create them, then they need two permissions. Those permissions are manage prompts and modify metadata through metadata API functions. So anyone with those two permissions can create prompts which is what we call the in-app guidance actual tools um, in the org. Now, that's not who can use them because any of our users can use them. And that's what we configure. So for each of them, we configure where they're going to appear. And we'll look at the options a wee bit later, but um, we can have them in different places on the screen. They're called floating, or we can have them docked, docked in the bottom right-hand corner. We can say who is going to um, use them, who they're going to appear for, rather, um, and that's based on 
profiles and then permissions, not permission sets, permissions. Um, we can write the content, we can link out, and we can embed videos into the content. Um, and we decide what they do. So what the option is, what it is linking out to, what we're, what the next step is. And then we decide and configure how often they appear um, and the schedule of them appearing. So don't worry, um, I am going to show you examples and actually we're going to walk through setting up some different prompts in this session. But first of all, um, just to help cut and colour to what prompts are, um, I, I'm confident you've already seen them in action. And that is because Salesforce have been and have had them applied in our orgs for a li little while already. Um, so do you remember when um, confetti started appearing on Trailhead? We as users used that for a while that, you know, Salesforce applied it to us and then they gave us the ability to put confetti in our own orgs. Well, that's what's happening with prompts. Salesforce used them. There's two examples here on the screen um, and there's many more that, that are in play at the moment. They use them to prompt us, but now we're able to use them to prompt our users. So that's where you've probably seen them already. But here is a prompt that um, I created, and we're going to look at this in more detail shortly. Um, but as an example, this is a prompt to say, welcome to Salesforce, an introduction to your CRM to new users. So you can see what that looks like on the screen. And that's one I created for my users. So that's, you know, I, I built that out entirely myself. So let's remember our pain points, sorry. Let's remember our pain points and think about why we might need in-app guidance and what situation it's trying to help us with and rectify. Um, and now, I don't know about you, but a lot of pain points that, that I've come across in my roles as a, a Salesforce administrator have been users, you know, constantly asking for help. Yeah, you know, it, it can be a lot. There can be a lot going on. We can be asking a lot of them and, you know, we are there to support them and so they're asking for, for help. Or they're doing things wrong, which can have consequences either for them or for the system or for another department. Um, or they're flooding our inbox and we just can't get through to developing the nice new tools for them because we're dealing with the 6,763 emails um, asking, where, where do I go to, to create the, the new opportunity? Uh, so, yeah. These are common issues with, with users. Um, and you know, also, there's the issue of you know, people not actually recognizing that we built a fantastic system because they're just struggling to use it slightly. And what might be um, what we're doing at the moment? Well, if we've been good admins and we're documenting everything, then we, we will undoubtedly have user guides of some sort. Now they can be on the type on the right, lots of paper, poor trees that have all been felled to create them. Um, and people have printed them out and they've got them on the desk, but oh, they're working from home now and they haven't got access to them. Um, or more likely, hopefully, they are electronic. Um, but you can see here, jokingly, I've put this as version, user guide version 5552. Uh, but who's keeping that up to date? And have we had time if we've got the 6,673 um, emails to deal with as well? So the reality is the phone is going to ring and email is going to ping to us rather than them look at the user guides as a big, um, big one resource. So I have got seven use cases and seven examples, and that's what we'll be looking at next. So these are the seven reasons, I think, to use in our guidance. Um, and for each of these seven on the slide here, I've got a prompt in place that I can show you to talk through um, my examples to hopefully really get you thinking, oh, that would work for my users or that might not work, but a variation of it might. Um, so number one, new users. So a bit like the, 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 the prompt I showed you briefly a few moments ago, um, people log into Salesforce for the first time, you can say, this is the new org, this is, this is what it's going to do. 
um, you can use it as part of your onboarding. Um, and so when they're they're logging in, um, once they've you know they've done their training and the hand holding's finished, then they've still got some resources there at their fingertips. New features. This is a big one. Obviously, if something new happens, you've done, you've finally got around to doing that bit of development and you've deployed it and it's live. Um, you've trained them on it, you've sent them all the notes and instructions. But actually to have something in app, in the screen, on the screen, when they're clicking on it, to remind them how to use it, that you know, that could be really useful, couldn't it? Third one is possibly my favorite. Um, and I think of this as um, guidance for, for known trouble spots. What I think of it is, is when I have paused and thought, oh, if I had a penny every time someone has asked me that question or asked me why that particular thing isn't working or where to find that particular thing, um, those are the known trouble spots. So think of those. That's what I've done. Um, and think of what guidance could you be giving your users at the right time to solve those driving positive behavior now you know i hold my hands up and and say that i have always been a bit of a data geek so i think of data when i think of this um and how do we encourage users to do what we want them to do with the system um and if that's putting in the right data then you know that's my my example but there's probably lots more for your individual orcs tips and tricks so a bit similar to known trouble spots but you know just an area where you think I don't think people are using this to its fullest. I don't think they can really see how user friendly it can be or how um, time saving it can be. I'm going to, you know, give them some recommendations on that page of how to be using it better. Announcements. Uh, so this could be company wide, department wide, uh, but the announcements that you might want to make. Have a look at the example I give later on. We're going to work through um, and see could that work for as a new way of communicating with your users. Um, and the final one is to link out to resources. We I know we've all got lots of great resources out there, um, and I'm going to show you how we can do that. Be it a video, um, or documentation, or or a separate websites or something like that. OK, so let's go through my seven examples now to meet the seven use cases. So this is one I've you know, alluded to this a couple of times now. Brand new users. So um, no criteria other than the first time they log in. Um, they will see this in the bottom right. So this is quite nice and welcoming. This is a docked prompt and the docked ones always appear at the bottom right. And they are the ones where you can put the most content. They're the biggest space and you'll see that shortly. So what do we say here? Um, well, welcome to Salesforce, an introduction to your CRM. Welcome to our company, Salesforce. Log in first thing each morning to view your tasks for the day, open your open work your open opportunities, update your forecast, capture your client conversations, send templated emails, and keep up to date with company news and chatter. And then the option there is they can go off to and click the link and find the full user guide. Now that's going to be really useful for new users. Well, like, right, I've logged into this new system. What was I meant to be doing? Or, oh, yeah, full cost, right? Okay, that was one thing I needed to do every day. So, you know, as you can see, that's, I wrote that entirely. Just um, it's relevant to my users. So what's relevant to, to yours potentially? New features. So this is the, the use case here. We have deployed opportunity paths. Yes. Um, and so we've gone through and we've created and set up the key fields and the guidance for success for each of the stages. You know, a lot of effort's gone into that. We know it's going to help our users, but do they all remember it's there? You know, we showed them, but I'm not sure they're all using it. So let's look at this one, another docked one, so we could use the, the full space. Attention, new feature. Opportunity paths are here. You can now quickly view and edit key fields on your opportunities using the newly enabled path feature. Your opportunity path includes on the left key fields, on the right guidance for success. So we've detailed that out there. Um, and that's going to appear for my sales users by profile. And I, you know, I've said that maybe that appears once every two weeks, just to, to help prompt them for a set period of time. Now, this is, as I say, my favourite, my, if I had a penny, um, 
Now, one thing I heard a lot of is my dashboard figures aren't right. And you know, I always go back and say, is it up, are they up to date? Have you refreshed the dashboard? Oh, no, I forgot it doesn't refresh on, on load. So here we go. I have put a floating prompt. I've put it in my top right hand corner because I don't want to miss it. Um, and I've just said figures not matching. If your figures don't match, please check that the dashboard has been refreshed. They don't refresh automatically. And now this one catches us all out at times. Simply hit refresh to ensure all figures are up to date. And then nothing they need to do other than just say, got it, thanks. So they've interrupted with it. I've reminded them. Let's, you know, let's hope that saves them some time and head scratching um, next time they're in the same position. Um, next one, another floating. Again, they don't really float, but it just is what they're called if they're in one of the one of the grid positions. So this one's top left, and this is driving positive behaviour. So I have added this one to the leads home page, you know, effectively the page you land on when you and you go to the leads tab. Um, and I have said that only sales users see this, but obviously that's just my use case. So here it says, working your leads, don't forget to, please remember to complete your lead source, a phone number or email, country and the company's industry. Without these fields, we cannot tailor the email marketing journey or maintain accurate KPIs. Okay, they can't say they didn't know it. Um, we've reminded them. They can say got it or they can go to the user guide for, for more details on what they've been told to do. Let's see. I wouldn't want to, this one to appear too often because it might annoy them, but I think it's a useful reminder. And then if we see that the data quality isn't increasing or inaccuracy or completeness, then we can say, look, we've, we've reminded you on screen. You can't say you've, haven't, you've forgotten about the industry field. You know, please try harder. OK, and then tips and tricks. Uh, so this is this is one of my favourites, um, and we're actually going to look at this one in a bit more detail later. So this is for all users because I've put it on the task homepage. So when they click on the task tab, um, if they use tasks, which you know nearly all the users do, then they'll see this pop up to the schedule that I've programmed it. Um, and it's because I don't believe that they all realise that they can use Kanban and how much time it will save them. So this is what I've put here. Did you know? Task page tips. Did you know? You do you can view your tasks as a simple list, as a split view screen or as a Kanban. Simply switch using the display as button, the fourth button from the right under the new task button, just to help them find it. Plus, if you try the Kanban style, you don't have to update the status manually. Just drag your task into the right column and hey presto. So yeah, I've written that. I've made it blue, the last line blue in caps and expiration mark just to highlight it for them. And I think they'll benefit from being reminded of that. Next, we have announcements. So in my use case here, I have put this front and centre, top centre, um, block, block, sorry, um, and I have put it for the marketing users. So I have done two things. I have gone to the marketing tab app and on their homepage, have put it there. And I've also restricted it so only the marketing profile users see it. So we're going to look at this one shortly. It's just to make an announcement that All Hands Call is coming up on the 25th of May and to click this button to register. Useful. There we go. Nice and simple, easy, great way to get in front of your users. And my last example is highlighting content, linking out to the different resources you may have. So here I've used an example as a video because I think it's a great little tool to do. Obviously, the content isn't quite relevant. It's for an event that's already happened and selfless and shameless plug there for um, London's Calling but you can really nicely um, embed a video. So if you think if you've got training videos or you've got a company announcement video and you want to put it on your homepage for, or any other page for your users or a subset of users, then you can. It's really straightforward to do. The only thing I'll highlight is you need to find the embed link, not just the, the URL that you would see, say, on YouTube. 
Okay. So they're my seven examples and they um, and the seven use cases that they matched. So let's now do two together. So we go to my org and we are going to, first of all, we're going to create the marketing floating prompt, the marketing all hands call announcement floating prompt. And then we're going to create the task tips and tricks one that was a docked prompt just to show you the different types. OK. So we need to go to setup and home and we can use the quick find button um, search box but we need to go to user engagement and then in-app guidance if you do use the quick search box I recommend you type guidance rather than in-app because I always forget the hyphen okay so this is a page and we have none at the moment so we are going to add our first prompt by hitting add prompt now to do that we need to open the offering bar so that's what we're going to do And then once we've opened the offering bar, it loads a new window with our org and we need to navigate to the page where we want the prompt to show. So this one, if you remember, was on our marketing app. So I'm going to go to my marketing app. And I wanted to place it on the home page, so I don't need to go anywhere else now. So I go to the top right and hit add prompt. So two types, as I mentioned, floating prompt or docked prompt. We're going to do one of each. This one is going to be a floating prompt. They don't float, I don't know why it's called it, but there we go. So we pick which of the six areas we want to place it in. So this is top center we chose for this one. Really make sure they can't miss it because we need them to sign up to this call. And we pick the position. So here is where we can specify whether we want to restrict it to only show to certain profiles and then certain permissions. So we are going to restrict it to people with the general marketing user profile. And we're not going to restrict it by permissions. So you can restrict it by um, system permissions, not permission sets, but permissions um, but we're not going to do this we're just going to everyone with the marketing user profile we're going to have it show for so this is a floating prompt so it's one of our smaller ones so we just put in the title and the body so we're going to call this marketing all hands call announcement now Looking at the numbers, yeah, we can't fit all of that in. So we're just going to have to call it marketing all hands call. So then the body is where we actually put the text. So let's pop that in. We're going to say register now for the marketing team all hands call on the 25th of May. Registration required. See below. Lovely. We've taken 101 out of 240 characters. So then we have a choice of um, one or two buttons. We have to allow them to dismiss it. We've got to give that a name and then we can choose to let them take an action. So we are going to call the dismiss button decline. And then for the action button, we're going to give them the registration details. So you can see it has both a label and a URL because we need to tell them where we want them to go by taking an action. So we're going to say register here, and then we're going to put the URL in. You've got to remember the HTTP, pop that in there. And that's that. So then we can hit next. And we can say, when do we want the um, prompt to appear. So we can give it a start and an end date if it has a lifespan. So this one we do because the, the call is on the 25th, so we don't want it appearing after the 25th. That would look rubbish. So we're going to say it's from today to the 25th of May. And then we want it to show every day possible, but leave a gap in. So it will appear every day unless they click on action. If they click on that Zoom link and, and register, then it won't appear again. 
So it's prompting them until they, they register, which is what we want. So then we give it a name. And as with everything in Salesforce, it will have an API name as well. And then we give it a description. And I'm going to mention in this one that we can reuse this because they have quarterly all hands call. So no point creating a new prompt each time. We can just edit it. So that's a note to myself and my colleagues. So once we're happy there, we can hit save and preview. There we go. So that's what it will look like. That's nice and easy. But looking at it, I feel like I might want to tweak that. Phil, we haven't mentioned the time the call's on. Um, I don't know. I definitely want to change that. So I'm going to hit edit. And I just work through until I'm at the screen I want to be out, which in this case is content. And I make my change. So I'm going to say it's at 11 a.m. BST. And then I'm just going to clarify on the on the registration, so the below below for link. And that's that's a bit better. So then just click through again. Next, next, next. Save and preview. Okay, yep, that's better. I'm happy with that. That does the job. That's what I want it to do. So I'm going to click done. Top right, done. And that's it. So now we can see there it says prompts on this page one. So when we look at it, when we've got the authoring bar open, we can see there's a prompt. And let's go back to our setup menu, hit refresh on that page, and we should see. Great. There we have our prompt is listed. So that's a floating prompt. It's on the marketing app on the home page. No views or completed completes yet, yet, and it is active. Great. So let's now look at the docked prompt. So from this same page, we hit add prompt again. We open the authoring bar again. opens a new window for us and we will navigate to, in this case, our task homepage because that's where we want to place this task tips docked prompt. There we are. Great. So I'm going to go to my top right again and hit add prompt. And this time I'm going to use the docked prompt. Um, I'm going to leave this open to anyone that lands on this page. Because if they're using the ta task, then it's relevant to them. I'm going to give it a header, task page tips, a title, of did you know? This is where we could embed a video, but we're not. We're going to embed it. We're going to put text in instead. So that's the text that you saw earlier on my example. Um, and I'm not going to add any, uh, an action button because it's just for information. So I want this to go live today. And I want it to show three times, but not more frequently than once every two weeks. No end date because it will just go until they've, they've seen it three times. So we hit next. We again give it a name. Descriptions always best practice. And then we hit save and preview. There it is. Yep, that, that works. I like that. I think it's clear. It's going to get their attention. Nice. Done. Let's go back to the home page and hit refresh. And we have two. Oh, well, you can see completes aren't applicable to this one because there was no action. Great. So let's just look at this schedule page one more time because I think it is important. So as I mentioned, there's a start and an end date for the lifespan. 
Um, only the start date is required, but if you don't want a prompt to appear after a certain date, um, bear in mind, you know, people have to land on the page that it's relevant to to get it to appear, then put a, an end date. The frequency, so how many times do you want to show it and what gap do you want in between? Um, pretty clear. Show prompt when page loads. That is going to show it every time according to your times to show and days in between, but it's not going to space it out with alongside the other prompts in your org. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a couple of ticks. Um, remembering that as soon as they acknowledge they, they press the action button on a prompt, they won't see it again um, unless you reset everything. So this is the setup page with a few more prompts in there. So let's just have a whiz through what this is doing. So um, we have the, the edit menu here. Um, so for each item, you can edit it, you can clone it, you can preview it, you can reset the metrics, which might be handy with the marketing all hands call if you edit it every quarter, re-release it every quarter. Um, you can delete or you can deactivate, which is a bit safer. Here are the views and completes. Here is where you add another prompt. Here is a button where you can start testing. I'm going to mention what that does in a moment. Um, and then here's the prompt settings. So when we open up the prompt settings menu, I'll start from bottom up. Um, custom setting, the custom prompts rather, that tick box there, you can untick that and just deactivate all of your prompts straight away and not show them in the org. Um, so if something's going wrong, some sort of situation is happening, you can just quickly do that. Um, the next one up, Salesforce standard prompts. I mentioned the prompts that Salesforce has in our orgs to prompt us. Um, there is a tick box under, I've hidden it there, but it is there that you can untick to disable all of those. And then the delay between prompts. Now, what this means is that, um, say you've got 15 prompts in your org um, and they've all got their, their frequency, this is the delay between any two prompts. So by default, it's set at every 24 hours. So they won't see more than one prompt in a 24 hour period. But this is where you could change that. The maximum gap you can leave is 99 hours and 59 minutes. Um, but you might want to let them see that more frequently. Um, bear in mind that this will still apply the settings. So you won't see the same one more frequently than you've set up on that individual prompt. Now, testing your prompts, um, you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can just hit the preview there on the bottom right. Um, and that's a bit like what we've done already. It'll just show you it in place. Um, or the start testing button will take you, um, open up the authoring bar and let you work through each of your prompts to see that they look and you want to, to sense check them or proofread them or check the links again. Um, alternatively, of course, you could log in as your as a user in different profiles or with different permissions and um, see what see what they see that way. Uh, and so com another common question, can we report on them? Yes, we can. Just like any other aspect of Salesforce, we can um, create a custom report type with the object prompt actions um, and build out our report type that way and drill down to users who's interacting, etc. So that might be really useful because the, the the settings page, if you have quite a few, then just looking at the metrics there is not going to be that easy and also it won't let you dig down into the who. So considerations. Um, this is a lightning only feature, so um, you need to be on lightning, not classic to use it. 500 prompts is the limit. I feel like we shouldn't be getting anywhere near that. That's why I've put the explanation mark. Um, and that doesn't even include any you might install from a package. In a sandbox, if you have any issue, double check because they're off by default in, in sandbox. If you go to adoption assistance, I think it is to turn them on. Uh, you can't use them for your chatter free or external users, I'm afraid. They, they, you know, they're not available to them. They're not available everywhere yet. So when you go to a page where you can't add a prompt, the authoring bar will just be greyed out. Uh, remember that there's the two permissions to uh, allocate to any other non-system administrator user that you want to create prompts, manage prompts, modify metadata through the metadata API functions. Um, they don't work for 
mobile apps, I'm afraid, on the mobile app, I'm afraid. Um, and there is an algorithm. So if someone says, oh, well, I, I clicked on it and it's still appearing. Well, you know, there is an algorithm. They're not 100% all the time. So just something to bear in mind. Now, what is my wish list for this product? Well, no, it's not that long, actually. It does a lot of good things. I wish that you could um, add them by other means or allocate them to users by other means than just profiles or permissions. I wish permission sets would be a good one for me um, instead because then you could create permission sets for that purpose. Um, I wish they could open them on demand. So if they remembered that there was that a useful prompt, but they couldn't read it at the time because they were on a call or something, that they could go back and get it themselves. Um, and I, I wish that they could do more than just link out. So Salesforce ones can actually go and do something within the org, if you've seen that, um, open up a menu or something like that. That would be really useful, I feel. So not a long wish list, really. Um, something else I'd like to mention is that there is an app exchange um, package that you can install. The, our friends at Salesforce Labs have created it. You install it into your app. Here is the um, short code to get to it, but you can just search for it on the app exchange and it'll install these five um, prompts into your org. Uh, you can't edit them really, um, I'm afraid, so they're probably there just to give you a feel for it, but it's a great idea as to, to dip your toe in the water with them. One thing I also wanted to mention while we're here, because I only found this out while doing the, while setting up all these in-app prompts, is that we can actually customise our own help menus as well. Who knew? Not me. Um, and I think this fits in really nicely because um, you can then link to resources that then are constantly available in that sort in that help menu. Um, so along with the Salesforce resources, you can put your own user guides, li links out to videos and things like that. Um, really useful. So my next steps to you are consider the seven use cases um, and examples that I've shown. Um, think which would work for you, what with what tweaks, etc. Um, install the App Exchange package into a sandbox, you know, because we always do everything first in a sandbox. Give it a whirl that way. Um, and when you do deploy them, only do it as to a subset of users first, you know, just in case, like see how they, they feel and get their feedback. So, thank you. That's been a whistle-stop tour of in-app guidance. Um, and I thank you for spending this time with me. Um, as a thank you, there is a virtual dreaming treasure hunt uh, and you can win prizes. So we will be mentioning and giving you the code any moment now. Um, and then hopefully there's some time for Q&A. So thank you for um, spending this 40, these 40 minutes with me and um, let's hear your questions. <laughs>